toolkit, the most followed teacher on Twitter in the UK. Um, I write the most influential blog. I'm here to share my 10 social media secrets. Um, so I'm currently a deputy head teacher. I do this all full time, full time job. I do all pretty much teacher toolkit my own time. I'm going to share the secrets to my success. Uh, so I blog, I'm an author. Uh, that came about from blogging, uh, speaking at these events with real honour as a result of all the things that I share online. I'm uh, a proud dad to work there and I'm going to talk about uh, my son at one point in the presentation. Um, so the objectives, half an hour, it's going to be very quick. I'd like you to engage, I'd like you to share a few things on Twitter with me at Teacher Toolkit and I'd also like you to take part, shout out, hands up, those kind of things. Typical teacher fashion. So I'm going to start with my journey share what works, what doesn't work on social media, and give you my 10 top tips. So, there's a Twitter name, there's a hashtag, um, let's get started. So first of all, what do you think about, what do you share online? So whatever social media platforms you use, what content do you share? So straw poll, uh, could you put your hand up if you're a teacher, please, just want to see if we've got, okay. Thank you. And, uh, if you classify yourself as an educator, in the field of education, probably everybody. Uh, if you're in the field of business, okay, thank you. Um, okay, four options. In terms of sharing content, do you just share news articles? Anybody? Do you share opinions, your own personal views of things? Okay, hands up. Okay. Um, do you share resources and ideas? Anybody? Hands up. All the teachers, well done. Anyone just use social media for chit chat? Gossip with your friends, Martin. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, number 10. This is how it all started. Um, you have to identify a purpose. So, I started using Twitter in 2008, professionally in 2010. And there was a point in my career, um, I was made redundant. Senior uh, assistant head teacher at the time, academy chain, all those kind of things, uh, financial. Uh, Pressures started at that point. I knew I was going to become a dad, um, and I've been teaching, you know, training teacher at 18 years old. 20 years later, I thought I need a break, try something different. Uh, so I went for voluntary redundancy. Unbeknownst to me at the time, my son was born premature. He was one pound nine, um, three months in hospital, uh, countless operations. I've, I've lost track of all the things, but it was incredibly stressful traveling 85 miles a day just to get to the hospital, uh, having no job, so I needed to start thinking about what I was going to do to help the family. This was a life or death situation, uh, typical, just like Beck, in a hospital there's no reception, that's Freddie today, it's a bit of an old photo, he's now five and a half, um, but typically you need to update your family with the circumstances, of, you know, you have a kind of email chain or a telephone chain, so I started writing a blog about Freddie, to understand uh, the doctor's notes, uh, from myself a bit of therapy, sitting in the hospital for 10 hours a day. Uh, so I started writing a blog, and that was Freddie's blog, and it was noticed by all the different uh, baby charities and things like that. So it kind of renewed my love of writing. I always have literacy demons. Uh, you know, I'm not the perfect speller, I don't know everything in the world. Um, so I started writing, and this was a, a bit of a uh, reaffirmation at a very low point in my career. Um, so it had quite a lot of hits. I knew it was always a risk, a life or death story, and, and we had to go with at least two conversations with the doctors where we were taken into a room and we had one of those conversations. So it was a real risk, but the, the plan was to blog, to share with my family through, through Facebook in a private forum. Um, so that then all got better, and then I thought about uh, getting back into to teaching. So if not now, when? When am I going to get back into it? How am I going to look after the family? If I don't do it, who's going to do it for me? So that was the kind of approach. The teacher toolkit was kind of born, they were reborn. So I'd already had the Twitter account in 2010, Freddie was born in 2011. So I now needed to take the ball by the hand of and start to do something about it. So I started to think, right, personal or professional? So I went with a professional, had a personal Twitter account, Ross Gill. I want to reflect, teachers need to be reflective, and we're in a community where we need to share ideas with each other. So that's the old blog from 2010. Looks pretty hideous. It's on the blog of blogger platform. Um, I probably did that for about a year or two. I, I went back into it uh, after Freddie's blog was uh, there, and I thought, right, I need to start thinking about something different, make it a bit more clean. 
Um, so the hits about that time, 2012, were about 23,000. I started with one follower, I started with one reader, but that wasn't the purpose of it for social media. I got into social media to share, to reflect, a bit of therapy, okay? just to write. So, in terms of what to say, there's a readership for everything. If I was a window cleaner, I'm certain there's a blogging community about window cleaning. Okay, so there's something for everybody. You have to be consistent. If I was blogging about window cleaning, I don't want to suddenly blog about teaching. It wouldn't make sense to the people that come to the website for that content. So te people that come to Teacher Toolkit come because they know they're going to get a resource, an idea, an opinion, something controversial to them with education, whatever it might be. And then find out what interests people. So engage on Twitter, get reading people's feedback, uh, writing blogs because that's what people want to read. Um, but all those things help. I've just put that image there. A lot of people ask, how do you do it? So on my blog at the moment, there's nearly 900 blogs. I just speak on my phone on the way home after a really stressful day. We have lots of them as teachers, more as a deputy head. Um, I speak into my phone, kind of digest, get it all out of the system before I get home and talk to my wife. Um, you can use Drag and Dictate, all these different types of apps that uh, write it for you as you stick it to the phone. Email it up to you, or if you're in the cloud, you email it up to your desk, copy it into your blog, a bit of editing, and then you get a blog. So that, I've got into a really good habit of doing that. Uh, and I probably do it two or three times a week on the drive home. So I'd recommend you speak to yourself after work. So tip number nine, brand yourself. Teacher toolkit is a total accident. I'm a DT teacher, design technology, so toolkit, teacher toolkit. The, uh, Paul McGuinness, the original teacher toolkit, God bless him. Um, he was the original teacher toolkit handbook. Uh, the teacher toolkit name was available on Twitter. So at the time, I keep calm, carry on posters and cups and tea towels were becoming the rage, so I grabbed that. And I kept that for a while, but as the blog became more popular, I thought, well, we need to worry about copyright here. So I then just thought, well, let's come up with my own little silly logo. And it started from this old picture. As you can see, this is how a picture I need to update uh, quite quickly, uh, seven or eight years later. And you can see how it kind of evolved into what it is today. And even now, I'm thinking about going to the next stage, which I'll elaborate throughout the presentation. So the blog prep, uh, website, the blog prep platform, uh, but I showed you the really awful looking one. I went into wordpress.com, created the WordPress site. That's an old preview from about 2012 or 13, that was about the time it started. Um, and it started to do really well. I mean, 140 countries, it's a little widget called Revolver Maps. Uh, I get all my tips from ICT Magic here. He is the brainchild, not me. Um, Revolver Maps, you can start to track where all the traffic comes from. Um, bit of playing around with branding from a book, uh, Bloomsbury, I was lucky they rebranded some of my um, images and gave me some nice fonts to think about. So that now is on the Twitter profile page, um, you know, with all of us coming up with different things, we think about how I might brand in the future, so if you've got any ideas, I'm looking to rebrand again. I want, although Teacher Talk at the Most Follow Teacher was a good brand, I want to, I'm at the stage where I need to take myself away from the front of the company. Um, it is a limited business now, and I'll explain that in questions at the end. Now I've got to that stage, but you know, it wasn't an accident. I'll, I have a design background, I've got a master's in design, I'm very passionate about design and creativity, and I make sure that everything's consistent. And that's a very accidental thing for me, because I came in as a teacher to do this. If you're a business, it's pretty obvious you make sure your business brand is the same in every platform. But for me, it wasn't that way of thinking as a teacher, it just started as a, a little Twitter feed and it's evolved into uh, lots of different avenues. I've got a lot of people helping, my wife in the middle, top of the middle, Jenny, uh, Holly here who's in the crowd, Holly helped me with my, uh, Holly read my blogs, asked me to write a book for Bloomsbury, we've developed a relationship with now editing, things like that. And I've got a few volunteer bloggers, I hope they can get to the stage where I can give them some honorarium. Um, and that's going really well, so it, it's an, I want to get to a stage where the blog becomes a community where people can post their own blogs. So it's a nice position to be in. Stage eight, consistency, or secret number eight. Why do followers come to you on your own Twitter feed or your own Facebook or whatever you want? Do you share this on the left or do you share that on the right? Okay, I've got my personal Twitter, it's locked. I'm a teacher and conscious of what I do on social media. Um, I tweet about football, beer, my son, what I'm doing in the park. But it's private. People come to teach a toolkit, they know what they're gonna get. 
if you get occasional personal things, people do say, oh, how does this account always push out content? Does this person not have a life? So I'm very conscious about well-being and make sure some people see a bit of real Ross and Gill behind the teacher talk at camp. But my long-term goal is to take me away from it and make it more of a, a forum for teachers and not just Ross. So in terms of an organic growth, um, make your Twitter handle easy to identify. Um, if you're late to Twitter, it's still not too late, it's about 300 million users. Um, it, it is possible to get the name that you want. Make it easy to find. Make it personalised if you can, put it on all the different set, same platforms. Can sit, keep it professional and interact with people that choose to read and follow you and ask you questions. In terms of locations, 85% of my followers, so Twitter is about 155,000 followers now, 85% of those people are in the UK, and I know that because I look at the analytics. About 20% are based in London, and then pretty much everyone else is in the key countries you can see here on the left, America, Australia, Dubai, Canada, those kind of places. Uh, I think that probably because that's where maybe teachers that work in the UK end up going to work, perhaps. Um, but there's a whole community around the world, and if you want to uh, social media, you know those things. So, just want to give yourself 30 seconds, talk to someone very quickly. Why don't last you share something professionally about yourself on your social media platform? Okay, talk to someone, please. This is a classroom environment. Number seven, clarity. Be clear what you do. There's value given to others. People respond well to your simplification. People like sharing. Um, I like to think that I'm in a position where I've shared lots of ideas, resources, I've helped shape the landscape. Um, I've helped people when they're in their need, so that I'm now in a place where when I need a bit of help, I pretty much get lots of ideas from other people. So the key thing here is to share, to talk to other people. In terms of academic research, two things I'll explain. Are you a mean informer or are you an informer? Now what that means is two common types of behaviour. The content and the differences between the content. Do you focus on yourself or do you focus on sharing? A mean informer, the self-focused, the self-indulgent, the seek attention, the want more followers and say, please retweet me. Now even before I even had one or two thousand followers, I still had all those requests. Maybe I was one of the first teachers to start using Twitter six or seven years ago. So I do that occasionally, but I believe that I'm an informer, where I'm focused on sharing, I'm focused on content, resources, giving other people a shout out when they least expect it, because I've seen something that they've done, and giving people retweets where I think they need it. Frequency. Tip number six. When I publish my book, my stats doubled. Um, I'm very fortunate, but by blogging, that wasn't the purpose to get a book deal. Uh, I just wanted to write. So I think that was quite a key moment where my traffic doubled on, on the site. A million views back in 2014. I'm now at five, over five million views on my site since I rebranded it. People started to make cartoons of my journey, which was flattering, looking at all the different analytics around the world. Being teachers, I'm very familiar that Sunday night, 9 o'clock, is the peak time to share ideas and talk to other people. Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Okay? Sunday, top left, 7 to 10 o'clock at night. That is the peak time I know my audience inside out. You can see the growth, you know, uh, pretty much 100 new followers every day and I don't need to tweet now, it's got that crazy. If you're familiar with bounce rate, a good website has about 20% bounce rate. Teacher Toolkit's at 3%. That essentially means people come to Teacher Toolkit, they know what they want, and they tend to go to three other four pages in the website and stay for about two and a half minutes per, per page. So my blogs are now less than three minutes to read because we're all busy people and there's thousands of things to read. So that's another tip, three minute blogs. Can you tweet me please? I'm going to retweet my favourites later today. What one piece of social media advice would you share? Because I want to learn from you too. I'm a teacher, I'm in the business of learning. So please tweet me your thoughts. What's your one piece of social media advice? Tip five. How am I doing for time? Okay? Thank you. 
So respond them and reply. Teachers need to respond. We're in the business of talking to each other and learning. Okay, and I'm very passionate about responding to everybody, but it's to get to the stage where it's impossible. So I'll show you some stats. This is an old one from a couple of years ago. In a period of about six weeks, I had two and a half thousand people tweet me wanted a question or a statement or a comment. That's a lot of things to read. Two thousand emails you can consider. You look at the frequency, this is by day. 25 tweets, 100 tweets, this is the frequency of replies that are coming back to me each day. So I got to the stage where I need to make social media work for me and pre-program things so I could deal with replying to other people. And I was doing this all on my own for the first four or five years. This is my Twitter analytics. You all have access to this on your Twitter. Click the top right. This is my last 28 day summary for this month. So if I just share with you, I've tweeted 942 times. That's down 17% of what I normally do. I've had over five and a half million impressions. That's five and a half million people have seen my tweets. Normally it's seven or eight million a month. 50,000 people have come to see my Twitter profile page. Three and a half thousand people have asked for something on Twitter. And you can see in the last 28 days over 2,000 followers. So the growth is huge. And the demand for engagement or someone asking me something new replying is huge too. So it is a huge impact on my personal life. So I'll get to the stage where I need to think about what I want to do in the future. If you get more of this through Twitter analytics, it shows the impression of the graphs when things happen. If you want to know if the January slump exists, there you go, this is the end of January. Less people read and stuff. Uh, Facebook, you get the analytics. I can see the red button. Uh, uh, you can see where people dislike the Facebook page. I need to see what I've posted. Maybe I've posted too often. Maybe there's particular things that people didn't like. I can work out why people leave. Um, you can get all this from Twitter. So these are all the different graphs for engagement. What does it mean? The clicks, how often people click your links. Top left, the likes, 272 likes a day. 34 retweets a day. Um, some of it's all to do with timing or actually the content. But the thing that works the most on Twitter is an engaging question or a statement, an image, a link to a blog, and a hashtag. Those are the key key signs of a really good tweet. I've got some examples. So here you go, the hallmarks. At the bottom it says a leading statement or a question, an image, a hyperlink, and a hashtag. I forgot to mention, I'm going to put all this online later, so don't worry about copying it all down. Um, anchor, I've just started using the Anchor. Voice recorded, automatically up to Twitter. People can hear me now rather than read it. And in, in the world of social media, some things are so easily taken out of context when it's written. So if you hear somebody's voice, and the tone of the voice makes a huge difference. So that's a really good app. Join it. It's a very young community. There's not very many people. In fact, there's hardly any in the UK using this app. I'll follow you straight away when I talk to people. Um, so use Anchor. Tip four, resources. Um, I started putting resources on my site straight away. Five million readers, people might come and get resources for things I do in my own school. I put them online. Obviously, I had to have school permission because there's school copyrights. I'm very clear about that in my blog. Some of your schools, if you work in a school, might say you can't share school content, so make sure you're clear about copyright. I got to a point where I started to index everything when I was learning how to use WordPress.com and then moved to WordPress.org, which is a self-hosted website, so I now host my own blog. I spent loads of time ranking and filing everything, wasting hours, and it was just pointless. So I'm now at the stage where you go to the top right of my homepage of the blog, you search, it shows you the most optimized searches of the blogs that you want to read. So if you enter four or five words, you pretty much find some content about that topic. So this was a meaningless task looking back when I did this about two or three years ago. That web page got about 500 blogs, all indexed. Um, intellectual property, uh, resource sharing, teachers can now pay resources. Uh, is it your own resource? Is it the school's resource? Is it somebody else's logo? You need to be very mindful of that. Um, I've had my fingers burnt, and um, I've also seen people use my work without uh, permission. So I've now just got a free license, people can use the work. It's the easiest thing to do. So Creative Commons is a good tip, getting Creative Commons, go through all the different questions about the content that you want, and it'll give you a little widget, and a little statement, and just add it to your website. Really easy, it can protect yourself. Tip three, scheduling analytics. This is how I get my life back, and how people say, how does he tweet all the time? 
while I'm tweeting, I'm having a bath with my son, I'm at the park, I'm having my dinner. My account now works for me, so my top secret. TweetDeck is a good lifesaver. You can schedule tweets, you can add multiple accounts, I think I've got 10 at the moment. You can choose different columns for the threads, different people you want to follow, different hashtags. Um, this column is my notification column, so I can see who, who are, who's talking to me or who's my new follower. And that's a really good platform, and I use that when I host SMT chat, and I've got a little team of people that do that for the senior leadership team community on Sunday nights. Uh, but Buffer is the one thing I wanted to take away today. Um, you can get a free account, you can schedule 10 tweets. You can see, they give you the analytics, you can see what works. I pay £30 a month, I get the business account version, I can add 10 different social media platforms, my Facebook, my Twitter, other Twitter accounts, and get in loads of details, so here's some ideas. There is some of my Twitter accounts, this is my queue of content, when you click the analytics at the top, you can see what information, how many people have seen different things. So if you go to my blog and type in what is popular this month, you'll see month by month I share all the tweets that have had the most engagement. This is a bigger screen, you can see the current queue, I've got a gap here, so imagine like a bus stop, you see the sign of the bus when the bus is coming. I've just gone behind the scenes and I've told my Buffer account when I want to tweet. So I think about teachers, I think about teachers getting up in America, or teachers getting going to bed in Australia, and I think about how people might see content. I can have a different schedule for the weekend, people read things first in the morning, then they go out with the family, they come home at night, Sunday night, plan for school, those kind of things. So you have to start thinking about your audience. You can go into optimal scheduling, so you can choose how often you want to tweet. I'm very conscious that I over-tweet, so I'm trying not to go, I'm now at the stage maybe it's 50 a day, it's probably too much, but people come to the camp because they know that's what's going to happen. And I would say 75% of the tweets are pre-programmed, so you might think I'm sitting in front of a camp or a phone, or a phone but I'm actually out in the park playing with my son. Okay? What it does, it schedules, looks at all your analytics, it shows you a pattern, gives you the times, and you press accept. It pushes them all into your buffer platform, and you can change the time slightly if you're not happy that you don't want to tweet at half past uh, midnight. So it's a really good tool, buffer. You get, uh, these are some of the screenshots. Uh, on my website, it goes into why a particular tweet gets 140 retweets. At the start of the new year, I put out something about three things for 2007, get rid of offset banners. I put the CPD into tiny tables, giving staff time to mark and plan. And it, well, it didn't go viral, but it had over a thousand retweets. It was all about timing. It was a tweet on the 1st of January. Um, tip number two, nearly finished. Top 10 lists. People hate them, people love them. They're the most popular blogs. People love lists. Seven tips for window cleaners. Ten tips for shopping at Tesco's. So these are some of the summer I've done. 101 female educators. The whole movement for women education, women in leadership. So I've spent a good three or four days writing there. Yes, it's a lot of work, but the, the kind of reap of engagement and traffic, this is now pushing, I think, 20,000 views. I only wrote it at the start of January. 101 educators, so not teachers, people in education. So these are basically just people I follow. Um, I'm obviously looking for lots of new people to follow all the time. Um, and 101 great to teach you to follow, that's a very old one, but that was probably one of the first ones, and that's, I think, pushing 30 or 40,000 views. So those things were five tips to grow followers, ten ways, just put a number on it, then the title. It works. Luckily, through all the social, uh, so, sorry, search engine optimization that I've learned myself over the years, it kind of leads to getting ranked in different, uh, Teach 100 is a, a global rank for education websites. Um, for a long time I was in the top 100, I'm now frequently in the top 30 across the world. Um, so I get a lot of people who are listed in America, and huge big companies, people like Mindshift, Edutopia. I'm kind of playing around with these big people, and I'm just a one-man band of all of the things are growing. But um, it's just very flattering to get that recognition, and it leads to awards. Um, Velio, I used to be Cision, uh, that ranked to be the number one blog in education for the last four years. So it's really flattering and a nice accolade for the hard work they put in. One of probably the most proudest moments was a couple of years ago, I got nominated for the Times 500, um, the Brexit 500 most influential people in Britain. 
And I, was learning, I'm, I still to this day am the only classroom teacher to feature on the list. And, and that's a lot to do with what I see as challenging Ofsted, challenging the DfE, uh, where I'm a humble classroom teacher. We all work in things together. We start to put on our voices and start to challenge things that are happening externally that impact us in the classroom. And I think that's probably the hard work of all those kind of uh, national debates, uh, getting rid of the off their gradients, those kind of things. So I was really chuffed to get that. My last tip. Uh, I've been scarred by this a lot in the last four or five years. It's getting less frequent. I even had one last night, believe it or not, after I met the St. So Ken Robertson after we there before his talk, uh, posted a picture of me and Ken. But um, don't feed the trolls. It's so easy, whether you're a company or an individual, people give you negative feedback, that's just life. Okay, not everyone likes what you do. So I've learned to live with that very quickly. So here's some examples. Who the hell do you think you are? I'll be quite happy with David Beckham. Um, she doesn't think it's a good thing, it's a terrible thing, you must be awful to work with. That's from an anonymous teacher account. And the brilliant thing with the community is someone tells me who it is. Um, because I've done the rule of reciprocation, I've helped people, they look out for me and then they help me in the future. I'm now at the stage where I don't want people to tell me. Uh, because it upsets you. So I just don't look at it full stop. But now I've got my followers that tweet me the information, so I just say I don't want to know. It's just not, it's just not worth it. Um, top tips for bloggers, you know, a bit of arrogant feedback here, just blaming that I'm a coward. Um, people criticising my books. You know, it happens. These are teachers. These people are teachers. Professional conduct online. Just consider what happens already with Teacher Toolkit, who reports you to your head teacher. I mean, people just make things up. Um, this is my favourite, so the last couple of slides. Someone who suffers from premature ejaculation, turning the education sphere into a five-minute philosophy. So you, if you've heard of the five-minute lesson plan, that's something that I've helped evolve over time. It went a little bit viral. I still think it's very useful, despite uh, teachers not needing to plan lessons for Ofsted purposes. Um, but yeah, that's one of my favourite ones. And that was a very detailed blog, that's just the, the, the highlight. Um, so, control or delete. Don't feed the trolls, don't reply, don't waste your time reading it, it will happen. Um, and those are the top ten. So it's all there for you, I hope it's been helpful. I'm here to answer some questions. At the end of the presentation, I've got top ten tweeting tips, blogging tips, and managing social media for you to read your own time. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming.